Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome you all to uh, the lecture series on uh, cellular automata. This is a virtual podium where we can uh, transfer our uh, thoughts, we can share our research findings, feelings. Actually, the researchers will bring research in different shades of cellular automata. We already had three sessions. First was uh, on uh, 16th August. And the lecture was delivered by uh, Dr. Shukanto Dash. Professor Dash enlightened us one of his current uh, research topics, formal logic of uh, cellular automata. Next was on September 19, uh, Professor Dipanita Rajoduri has given her excellent talk on uh, nonlinear maximal length uh, cellular automata, a better cryptographic primitive. Third was on, uh, third was on uh, 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 mainly on algorithmic information dynamics of cellular automata. The session was taken by Professor Hector Zinai uh, on 6th October. So from 6th October onwards, uh, after more or less one and a half months later, we are again in the same platform today. And uh, today, our, today is our uh, fourth uh, talk of this series. Today's topic is uh, fuzzy cellular automata and its applications. Let us uh, use this as an opportunity to introduce next event details also. We will introduce or announce the next uh, event details also. Our next talk is on December 5, which will be delivered by Professor uh, Kenichi, uh, Kenichi Morita, uh, her uh, chosen topic is simulating tubes in a simple uh, reversible cellular automata. Uh, now, uh, coming back to our today's session, uh, in our today's session, we shall get a good understanding of quasi cellular automata and its application from our respected professor Dr. Shunita Bashu. Dr. Bashu completed her bachelor degree. From uh, Lady Devon College in 1973. After that, she uh, received her MSc degree in uh, 1975 from Calcutta University. And from the same university in 2002, she received her PhD degree. She was a lecturer of Chorina Devi College and Bethune College in Kolkata. And uh, then in 1987, she became an associate professor of her alma mater, uh, Lady Devon College. She retired as a professor of Bethune College in 2013. And then she was a visiting professor there. Uh, there. At present, she is a visiting uh, faculty of uh, Heritage College, Kolkata. Her uh, key research areas are offset mathematical logic, approximate reasoning, AR, fuzzy set theory, cellular automata, etc. So, uh, ma'am, now this is over to you. Please continue to start your talk. Thank you. So, let's start. Well, uh, I first thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity of speaking on fuzzy cellular automata on which we are working for quite some time. Now, uh, let me first uh, start with uh, saying that uh, uh, since this is the fourth lecture and uh, the, uh, so the cellular automata as such is a mm, very known topic for all the participants over here. But uh, I will go through this quickly, the uh, notations because uh, the notations that I'll be using, you may not be used to that. So, why? What is the motivation for studying the fuzzy cellular automata model, FCA model? Actually, uh, mainly the uh, model which uh, the researchers are using is the CRISP computational model but uh, the fact is that the CRISP model, they um, require exact measurable quantities. But uh, for all for practical purposes, 
we may come across situations where exact measure, measurable variables cannot be used, mainly in physical, biological, and economic or social phenomena. We very often come across such situations. So uh, we have uh, tried to incorporate this fuzzy cellular automata. Actually, uh, for this, I think I should first start with what a fuzzy set is. <coughs> fuzzy set was introduced by Zadeh in 1966. Actually, the CRISP set that we are very commonly using for that, uh, it's, uh, there is a hard and fast uh, situation where uh, a, an element either belongs to the set or it does not. But uh, Zade was, he defined the fuzzy set as a subset of such crisp set where there are elements which have a membership function, saying that the grade, there is a grade of membership so that any element, any element of that set uh, will be uh, uh, represented by an ordered pair, maybe represented so that suppose there is an element X uh, in A tilde, which has a membership function attached to that. This is the ordered pair so that the membership uh, with this membership function, this ordered pair will represent an element of A tilde. Uh, th this uh, mu A cap, sometimes when there is no ambiguity, instead of using this X, we only use mu A cap X. That is how a fuzzy set have been defined by Zade. And uh, well, I'm just quickly going through the uh, mathematical portions that I may need for my uh, discussion. Well, I'll be using fuzzy matrix. The fuzzy matrix, as the name says, that it's just a matrix with uh, where the elements are again ordered pairs, aij, mu ij. At times, instead of using this aij also, we only use mu ij, where that means the ijth element will have the uh, membership function mu ij. Now, uh, this fuzzy, once we introduce the fuzzy matrix, the matri matrix multiplication also need to be defined. Like, uh, so that if we have two fuzzy matrices A and B, where A is uh, M cross N matrix, then B is a necessarily a N cross K matrix because the rows of A must be the same as the, uh, I'm sorry, the columns of A must be the same as the rows of B in order the matrix uh, to be multiplied. And that will be CIK where the multiplication is defined as the uh, max min function. And then we need, will need this fuzzy number, where fuzzy number is a convex and normalized fuzzy subset of a set of real numbers. In fact, actually a real number, uh, at times we will be using a real number uh, counterpart of the fuzzy, fuzzy counterpart of the real number, which is which is also sometimes taken up by the triangular fuzzy number. Uh, we will be using more often this triangular fuzzy number. There are other fuzzy numbers as well, like uh, for uh, which is which we won't be using. And this triangular fuzzy number is a triplet a1, a2, a3, which is defined only from the interval A1 to A3. In the rest of the case, uh, rest of the positions, this membership functions are zero. Since the membership function is zero, that means there are no, no elements outside this. 
and for from the uh, in in the range a1 to a2 this is the membership function will be defined as x minus a1 by a2 minus a1 and in the uh, range a2 to a3 it will be a3 minus x by a3 minus a2 this is how we define the triangular fuzzy number and the two fuzzy numbers are uh, we need the multiplication of the of two fuzzy numbers suppose we have a fuzzy number uh, a cap alpha which is represented by this um, interval a1 alpha a2 alpha and then again b cap alpha which is b1 alpha b2 alpha then the multiplication will be defined like this that is the minimum over the multiplicative things like uh, a1 b1 a1 b2 a2 b1 a2 b2 that is the left hand in that would be the um, uh, left hand element of the interval and the maximum would be the right hand element of the interval and one more thing we require which is the alpha cut alpha cut is nothing but it is set where the elements of the fuzzy set a, a tilde alpha will be those elements of a tilde which for which mu uh, the uh, membership function is greater than alpha we will take care of only those points for which the membership function is greater than alpha next uh, about uh, a quick recapitulation of the cellular automata cellular automata as we all know started in 1940s uh, by was started by norman and ulam and after that in 1960 the garden of eden theorem was due to moore and mayhill in 1970 after the invention there was considerable interest after the invention of Pompey's game of life however uh, the part we will be interested here is one dimensional cellular automata and that came into existence from 1980 stephen waltram classified such one dimensional cellular automata into four different classes according to the dynamics exhibited actually now what is a cellular automata as such that is a uh, it's a model of a dynamical system with where uh, there is uh, since i'll be talking only about one dimensional model so i will restrict, uh, restrict myself to a, a linear grid line and there will be uh, a number of cells based on this linear grid line and the grid may be finite may be countably infinite i'll take care of only these two situations and uh, on each of these cells there are automatons automatons are placed on each of these uh, cell peaks so that uh, by we all know what an automata is that's the uh, uh, quadruple q i x i m i f i where there are qi is the now internal states xi is the input mi is the transition function and fi is the set of accepting states so that there will be one uh, each cell of the grid will act as a finite automaton so that uh, and we will consider only synchronous um, <coughs> system so that each of these automaton will uh, work at the same time and so that the changes of the cells each of these cells at the micro level will generate an evolution pattern of the ca at the macro level and that's the hybrid cellular we will talk about the one dimensional n r hybrid cellular automaton when when we are talking about n r n is the number of cells and r is the radius of the cellular automata we are referring and uh, so that 
the uh, internal state of the cellular automata will be a partition product of n um, internal states of the n automata. Similarly, about the input symbols and the accepting states. The radius is r. There will be a set of uh, global configuration and global transition. And uh, uh, there will be a, uh, we will uh, mainly talk about the restricted model where all the QIs are same. That means uh, for uh, if IF cell has the automaton AI and the J cell has the automata AJ, then the, uh, then all these uh, internal states will be the same and equal to Q. The set of accepting states will also be, we will take them for the, uh, to be the same. And the radius will, we will mostly talk about. The now, I'm sorry for interrupting, ma'am. Can you please adjust your uh, camera? We can't see you actually. Ma'am, we can't see you. Can you please adjust your camera? Yes, ma'am, we can't see you. No, uh, but... Uh... Ma'am, we can see your slides. We can hear you properly. But just one request, we can see you. That's the thing. Ma'am, I guess you have to just, uh, just adjust your uh, laptop screen. Uh, just uh, low, lower laptop. it a bit Yes, ma'am, we can see you. Yes, can you see me? Yeah, yeah, we can see. Can you see my slides? When when I'm showing the slides, I think I'm not visible then. Yeah, you are not visible to you, but we can see both your slides and you now. It's fine, ma'am. You can see? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we can see, ma'am. Thank you. Is it okay now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I was talking about this finite one-dimensional hybrid CA, which is uh, this uh, in which uh, where there is a boundary, as the block uh, diagram shows that there, if there is a boundary element B and B, and the all the cells will be in between. Uh, this is how this is the case of a typical grid line of a one-dimensional CA. And in the case of an infinite dimensional CA, it will be like this, the bro, there will be no boundary element. Now, the, what is a global configuration? The global configuration is a mapping from the group of the integers Z to the set Q, the group of the, like uh, when we say Q to the power Z, the set Q to the power Z is the set of all global configuration. This is just the uh, definition that we use very much. And if uh, here, uh, this uh, script uh, capital M is the global transition function. And if this is a function of time T, then we say that the CA is temporally hybrid. However, if this is a function of I, I representing the uh, integer, uh, the, the number or the I cell, then the CA is said to be spatially hybrid. And then we have a local transition as well. Local, I'm sorry, first a local configuration. Local configuration is the configuration of the IF cell. That means 
the state in which the cell is. That is uh, in, uh, in mathematical language, we write it like this, CI is SI to Q, but actually it means the, cell, the state in which the cell is at time T. Now the transition function of the local transition function will be uh, mi uh, uh, will be given by the uh, if there is this r if it has radius r then uh, this uh, the input would be si minus rt si minus r plus 1t etc si minus 1t si plus 1t to si r plus t this acting on sit the function will act like this so that the at t plus 1 it stage uh, SIT plus 1 can be represented like this and the global transition function however will be the at time T plus 1 in fact the global transition function will be SIT plus 1 this is the uh, configuration and all these terms like S2 SIT plus 1 can be calculated from the local transition function so that the global transition function can be computed from the local transition function like this and this is just at discrete time steps this was the position the global um, configuration at time t and at time t plus one this is and there will be a transition from this the t -th stage to the t plus one at stage through the uh, function m Now it should be a homogeneous, we will call the CA a homogeneous CA provided all the MIs are the same. That means the local transitions, if they are all the same, then it, they will act like a, they, we will call that a homogeneous CA. Now, uh, next we will talk about the configurations. We will try to find the configurations which can be attained by the CA. That is, so uh, when the CA starts, that is at time t equal to zero, let the uh, configuration be C zero. And and if uh, at time there exists a number k such that C t equal to C t plus k, that means the configuration at time t is equal to configuration at time t. There exists no k dashed such that this happens. So that if uh, ct is equal to ct plus k dash, then uh, ct plus k dash and ct plus k are the same. So that there are only t plus k distinct configurations which may be attained by the ca. So that if it starts from c0, it can uh, go up to ct plus k minus 1 only. And the set of all possible global configurations attainable by the CA will be C star, which is given like this. And C star is also sometimes called the forward orbit of C0. And uh, a CA having, a, um, uh, having the initial configuration C0 is sometimes defined like this. Now we are in a position to define a word of the CA. Now what do we mean by the word of the CA? That is X uh, is equal to the uh, tuple N tuple X1, X2, Xn such that each Xi will be equal to the state at the ith level. That means Si. And we will say that X appears in the configuration. X will appear in the configuration provided B X B belongs to C star. That means uh, this configuration is attainable by the CA. And uh, so this configuration CT, a uh, configuration CT 
is accepted by a one-dimensional cellular automaton if and only if for all CIT, each of the uh, uh, configuration at time t CIT will belong to the set of accepting states of that automaton. Then we say that it is uh, um, this uh, CT is accepted because CT, as we know, CT means the CIT is the uh, actually this at times SI CIT may be SI. And now, if and only if CIT belongs to FI and a word will be accepted. This here, this is a configuration is accepted provided each of the cells are in a local configuration which is accepted by the corresponding uh, cell which, which belongs to the set of accepting state, states. And the word X will be accepted provided after some finite time t, some finite time t, there is a configuration which is accepted by A. And we denote this as X accepts A. In other words, a word X is said to be accepted by the CA if and only if the orbit of BXB, which is a configuration again, contains a configuration attainable by A. The orbit of BXB, if BXB is the in C0 at that time, then we say this. And these are a few uh, results which are very well-known results. That is, this uh, configurations, attainable configurations is a subset of the set of all configurations. Again, if the CA is finite, then C and R will be finite. If Q is of order M, then R will be of the order M to the power N and so on. Now, the what are the set of words accepted by the CA? The set of words accepted by the CA will be uh, denoted by LA where LA consists of X belonging to x to the power n such that x is acceptable by a. All those words which are accepted by the CA. And this LA is a finite set. Why? Because capital X itself is finite, Q is finite, and the uh, CA is finite having boundary elements B. So LA is a finite set. And the class of language accepted by all CA will be uh, LCA, which is equal to L star, such that there exists a CA which, whose um, language class is L star. Then this is called the class of language accepted by all CA. Now I'm in a position to define the fuzzy cellular automata. Fuzzy cellular automaton was introduced by Adamatsky in 1994 and later studied by Catania, Flocini, etc. Et al. Well, what is the basic difference between a uh, fuzzy cellular automaton and a deterministic cellular automaton or crisp cellular automaton? Here, the, uh, there will be a grid line as usual. And in the grid line, the cells for a crisp CA uh, con contains a deterministic automaton. And here, the uh, uh, IF cell will have a fuzzy cellular automaton so that this would be a one dimensional fuzzy cellular automaton is a linear array of fuzzy automata. So now what is a fuzzy automata you may ask me? 
Achha, before going in to the definition of the fuzzy automaton, let me tell you what we will be, uh, uh, we will try to show here. Actually, we will show that the, we would like to show that a hybrid fuzzy scale, the language accepted by uh, hybrid, there exists a hybrid um, fuzzy CA such that the language accepted by the, that HFCA cannot be accepted by a CA. In that sense, it, is, it would be, uh, we can say that an HFCA is more powerful than a fuzzy CA. I, I'm, I'm sorry, than a ordinary CA, crisp CA rather. Now, the, what is this uh, fuzzy automaton? Let me define this. For a fuzzy automaton, like the um, crisp automaton, there will be set of internal states, and these set of internal state Q, I, tilde will be fuzzy. Similarly, the uh, input would be the input set is also fuzzy, and the set of accepting states will also be fuzzy. And together with this, the um, the, uh, the transition function, that is also a fuzzy transition function. So since it's a fuzzy transition function, so how to represent that? In order to represent a fuzzy transition function, we require this fuzzy matrix. The fuzzy matrix can represent the fuzzy transition function. And the set of all such fuzzy transition functions for this particular uh, AI tilde is given by script PI. Now, the, now we are in a position to define this hybrid fuzzy cellular automaton. So what happens for a uh, fuzzy cellular automaton? We can we can very well uh, uh, assume that it will be just like a crisp automaton. I, as I told you before also that uh, each of the cells will be a fuzzy automaton. Hence, uh, the internal state of this uh, fuzzy HFCA will be a Cartesian product of the N uh, fuzzy sets, the input would be again the Cartesian product and the set of accepting states will also be the Cartesian product like this. In the case of crisp CA, these were all crisp quantities. And now we have to take fuzzy counterparts of the same. And R denotes the set of all possible global configurations M denotes the global transitions and L dash is the subset of 0, 1. L dash consists of those um, um, quantities which are attainable by the C, fuzzy CA in question, the one which we would be discussing. And similarly, the possible global configurations will be uh, uh, the set of all possible global configurations will be again a, a Cartesian product of all these. Now local transition, how do we define the local transition? All these elements, the ith, uh, at time t, the ith cell will be in a fuzzy set because I, as I told you the uh, internal state is a set of fuzzy quantities so that would be SIT and I'm sorry uh, and HFCA we will take HFCA to be of radius 1 so that since it's of radius 1 so the input letter would be Input letter would be an ordered pair SI minus 1 tilde T and SI plus 1 tilde T. And this is a fuzzy SI 
uh, tilde t, that would be a fuzzy quantity, since there are k elements of the uh, internal state, so this can be represented by these k numbers. And therefore, is i tilde t plus 1, this would be the uh, transition, this can be represented by this transition, I'm sorry, the this is the uh, transition matrix, so that this would really be a multiplication, this P, this would be S I tilde T dot P Z. This is the fuzzy transition matrix. This is how we can find the local transition function. Now, once we have got the local transition function, the global transition function will be just similar to the one we got in the case of crisp set. Here, the, for the crisp um, CA, we got this as CT plus 1 was MCT. And here, they were not fuzzy, only they were all crisp. S1T plus 1, S2T plus 1. Here, this would be replaced by their fuzzy counterparts. And this S1 tilde T plus 1, we computed just before for computing the um, local transition function. So similarly, the global transition function can be computed here. Now, here there comes, there it is slightly different for the fuzzy case. That is the local configuration SI cap, SI tilde T is accepted. <clears throat> In the case of uh, the um, uh, crisp counterpart, this SIT is accepted by an FCA, uh, by a CA, provided SIT belongs to uh, FI, right? But here what happens, since this is a fuzzy quantity, SI tilde T, this being a fuzzy quantity, we have such a, uh, a K tuple, and this will be accepted by this HFCAAF provided there exists A1, A2, AK belonging to F, actually this should be F tilde, such that for all this or each of these SI, uh, uh, K, Z, I, J should be greater than or equal to AJ. This is also a, 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 a K tuple of fuzzy quantities. And this should be F tilde because this is a fuzzy set. And each element should be greater than or equal to the corresponding element of the set of accepting states. This is where the difference comes. And the global next, the global configuration will be accepted as before. If each of these um, local configurations are accepted, this is the uh, most possible uh, definition. And then how do we get the language? The language, I'm sorry again, the language set if this is if the initial uh, configuration is c0 for this fuzzy set then uh, the global this and c0f is bzb then ctf will be the set of all configurations attainable by the hfca the uh, set of configurations attainable will be obtained just like the one, the way we have done it for the crisp CA. And CF is the set of all configurations attainable by the HFCA from C0F for all time. 
this is in time t and this is for all time this is how we define this and the word z belonging to z, uh, z1 cross z2 cross zn is said to be accepted by the hfca if there exists such a uh, hfca with c0 f equal to bzb that means the initial configuration is bzb and there is a ct belonging to cf which is accepted by af and we denote this as z accepts af the similar to the crisp uh, counterpart uh, the set of words accepted by the hfca af is denoted by laf and that is z this z only which is accepted this z equal to z1 z belonging to this such that z is accepted by a and again the class of language can be defined like this now we could prove a theorem which says that there is an injective mapping between the language class of ca and a subset of the language class of hfca this being too big i have just uh, mentioned the uh, result uh, and uh, that is uh, this is in a published paper now the last uh, part that i would like to do in this section is that i would like to show that hfca i told you before that hfca is more powerful than a uh, ca because there exists an hfca such that the language uh, class of af cannot be equal to a uh, the language class of uh, any ca now this has been proved by uh, a theorem uh, i'm sorry by a uh, an example we have taken an example where the set of uh, internal states of all the um, fuzzy automaton are the same and that is q equal to a singleton element q so that q dash the uh, set of internal states of af will be uh, the uh, cartesian n product cartesian n product of q x dash will be the same the transition uh, the fuzzy uh, transition matrices we have taken like this pq3 q1 q2 is this pq1 q2 q3 is this f1 f2 and f3 are defined as point f1 is 0.4 since there is only one element so the fuzzy uh, counterpart will also have only one element 0.4 this is 0.5 and this is 0.2 and the initial configuration we have taken only three cells here instead uh, i have started with n but n is taken to be 3 and the initial configuration is this so that the ca would be like this this is the initial uh, configuration we start with this initial configuration and then uh, well with time we go ascending then what happens the this this is the i first cell this is the second cell and this is the third cell so that when we are computing the p3 p2 uh, this would be p3 is this one so p3 p2 uh, i'm sorry p3 p1 p2 ah uh, this this is a third cell this is the first cell and this is the second cell that would give you the, for that you have to divide by 0.5 so that this one should have been 0.5 k minus 1 into 0.05 like this ultimately you get 
then 0 0.05, then point, because division, dividing by 0 0.5, it would, we will reach 0 0.4. And this being the identity function, here the, uh, uh, being the identity matrix, so it would be 0 0.5 throughout, and this being divi divided, dividing this by 0 0.5, we can go up like this. So that all the, these are all configurations. This was the initial configuration. And all these are configurations. And all of them are, since for any positive integer k, we find that each of these can be accepted by the, um, uh, th th this will, all of these will, can be accepted by the HFCA. So LAF would be this where k is any positive integer. And from this, we can say that LAF is a, an infinite set. And we know that LA cannot be infinite. So there does not exist an A such that LA equal to LAF. Therefore, uh, a, we can conclude that a fuzzy cellular automaton is uh, more powerful than a um, cellular, uh, I mean, HFCA is more powerful than a CA, crisp CA. And then we will go in for this application part where we have uh, taken a Boolean CA and we have actually, uh, we could uh, find, we could show the growth trend of a dynamical system. As we know, we all know that a dry, dynamical system uh, uh, can be uh, modeled by a CA. Here, a, a dynamical system, which has uh, imprecise uh, parameters, can be modeled by a fuzzy CA. This, this is usually modeled with the help of by fuzzifying the Boolean CA. How? Like uh, this is a, let us take a one dimension. This is a, a, a slightly uh, restricted model where fuzzy CA, FCA is a one dimensional CA where the local transition function is again a fuzzy function. And the formal definition says that this Q tilde is an, again a state set, which is a subset of zero one this is just like the one that we have done. I gave you the definition before. And the local transition function here, the local transition function is a fuzzification of the Boolean function because Q that we will take into account has only two elements, 0, 1. This is a Boolean scale. And uh, the dis for this, we require this disjunctive normal form fuzzification, which have been used quite, for quite some time. And this Boolean CA will give the fuzzy transition function. Okay. Uh, we will use this as, the, uh, for this, we will use uh, the AND rule, Boolean operator, AND operator will be replaced by the uh, fuzzy operator mean the or um, gate will be represent will be replaced by max and not by one minus a so that rule 200 of Wolfram can be uh, uh, done by this fuzzy transition rule for this Wolfram code will be like this and the DNF for rule 200 is this, so that the DNF is this. Therefore, that's the fuzzification would be this and will be replaced by mean and or will be replaced by max. So that it would be this. This is how we will fuzzify. And for, uh, we have used this for the uh, FCA for uh, computing uh, for designing this FCA model.
representing COVID-19 spread for a short period from 11-4-2020 to 15-4-2020 for India. Now, our world, from Worldometer, we have got the data as the number of active cases on 11-4-2020 was 7189. And on 15-4-2020, it should be, was 10440. So that we, we can take Y0 to be 7.189 and Y4 will be 10.440, which gives the uh, reproduction rep number row as 1.098. And now this Y0 tilde is taken as the triangular fuzzy number. This is the triangular fuzzy number. So that this would be uh, Y0, we will take this as Y0 minus 0.4, Y0, Y0 plus 0.4. So that this will be the triangular number, this 6.789, 7.189, and 7.589 is the fuzzy triangular number. And rho equal to 1.098 is a crisp constant. So the pattern values of slightly moderately and highly infected active cases during the stipulated time period is given here in the table by this time to you on 11.4 the if yt cap with this the alpha cut is taken this yt cap yt uh, tilde uh, we have taken the alpha uh, as 0.25 this is the alpha cut so this would 6.889 to 7.489. This is for with 0 0.50 and this is with 0 0.75. Hence, this would be, uh, this is how till 15. For a short period of time, this row remains constant so that we get this table. And this when, uh, plotted this shows that the this is the the one with maximum 0.75 this yt 0.75 when we are this 0.75 this is the maximum infected load this is the medium infected uh, population and this is the uh, mildest part so this when plotted this uh, the one which is this black part represents the maximum infected portions and this is the uh, moderately infected portions and these are the mildest and it goes on increasing it shows that the growth trend is increasing similarly we have calculated this for uh, uh, the data from Ger Germany we have calculated in Germany rho was uh, less than one so that the actually the table goes like this and this is the graph and in China this rho was almost equal to one so that the for China during that same time period so that it was almost uh, uh, it was maintaining a status quo there was no change as such however then uh, this this is the for a larger period of time that is uh, it goes on for a short period row remains the same therefore uh, uh, and when it changes, as rho changes, it becomes hybrid. For the shorter period, this is uh, not hybrid, but as it goes uh, for a different uh, time period, the um, rho ch as rho changes, it becomes a hybrid CA, hybrid fuzzy CA. But this is temporarily hybrid, whereas the example that we have done to show that HFCA model is uh, uh, more powerful than the uh, CRISP-CA model, there 
the hybridness was spatially hybrid because there was change in uh, the IF uh, cells. Uh, the first cell and the second cell and the third cell, they had different transition functions over there. And here, this is a, form, uh, a temporally hybrid case. And this is the bibliography. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for your wonderful lecture. So now this is the time for question answer session. So please, uh, audience, ask the questions. Yeah. Ma'am, can you hear me? Ma'am, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, thank you for the lecture. Yeah, uh, thank you for the lecture. I was asking what is the implication of uh, uh, HFCA being more powerful than RCA? Because CA is considered as, as powerful as it was. I can't, I can't. Uh, as powerful as it was. Can you hear me? Komulika, we can hear you. Okay. So, uh, my question was, what is the implication of um, HFCA to be more powerful than uh, CRISPR-CA? Because we already know that a CRISPR-CA or a classical CA is as powerful as the universal healing machine. So, what would be the implication of this? That's what I'm thinking. Can you please uh, just tell us? I think some maybe some uh, internet issue in ma'am's ma'am's side. Ma'am, can you hear us? Yeah, ma'am, join again. Kamalika. Uh, ma'am, can you hear us? Hello? Ma'am, can you hear us? Okay, ma'am, we can't hear you actually. Please unmute and uh, please uh, respond. <laughs> Kamalika is asking some questions. She has, she has a question. Ma'am, can you please unmute yourself because we can't hear you. Hello? Yeah, it's fine. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Okay. So I was asking one question, actually, ma'am. Yes, please. Yeah, I was uh, saying that uh, you have shown uh, an example of where an HFCA is uh, more powerful than a CRISPR or a classical C. So that okay. HFC, I guess it is a finite CA as well. So huh? uh, I, that cliff CA you have designed, that is uh, having some uh, finite number of cells. You have taken only three cells. Yes, I have taken a finite number of cells. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, in that sense, uh, you have said that it is more powerful than a classical or cliff CA. But uh, it is proved that a classical CA or a cliff CA, what you have said, it is uh, as powerful as the universal healing machine. And that proof is based on where uh, the CA is taken as an infinite CA. Now, what is the implication of this result actually? 
how we can uh, relate this to the result? What will be the implication of? I, I didn't get you the, uh, get your last uh, what you asked uh, the last. Um, oh, I. I, uh, I was. I was saying that uh, the uh, classical CA it is uh, proved to be as powerful as the universal Turing machine, and in that proof it is taken as an infinite CA. That is the CA is defined over an infinite lattice. Now your example it is a finite CA, finite fuzzy CA, and you are showing one example where it is uh, accepting some language which can't be accepted by your uh, uh, crisp or classical CA. So in that sense, you are saying that it is more powerful than a uh, uh, classical C. I so, mean, so far as uh, well, uh, there the uh, one uh, example that is the it's a, as a recognizer one uh, uh, it cannot accept such words. The one see. that I have shown that there uh, this infinite number of it accepts more. Um, words than the um, CA, CA uh, finite for finite CA uh, uh, this is uh, well what uh, I think what you want to say is that uh, if I uh, if we took uh, infinite CA mm -hmm. then uh, it would have uh, done the same work uh, uh, it could have accepted that That's yeah yeah because yeah, if it is possible, then uh, we will just say that okay, it is as powerful as the universal Turing machine. So, can we go? Are we going beyond that, or we are again limited by that? Uh, that no, I am limited by that. Uh, I have uh, here. Uh, we are only considering uh, finite uh, CA with boundaries hmm. and um, the finite HFCA also. Okay, so, so, the, so the example. comparison is between finite uh, CRISPR and finite uh, HFC. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. That's what I want to do. Okay, okay understood. Thank you. Now, I mean, very easy. Oh, one day, for our friends, we can see. You know, I have told them. बक्स <laughs> Yes, uh, Kamulika, can you see it? Actually, I got disconnected. So, can you see the question of Genaro? Uh, uh Genaro, uh, can you please unmute yourself and you can ask, I guess. Otherwise, I'll just. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you please ask the question yourself? Hello. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay, good morning from Mexico. So very interesting talk, thank you. I have uh, some questions about of what happened in two dimensions language for this kind of automata, please. Hello, hello. I didn't get you. Yeah, what is the state for uh, two-dimensional serial automata about of this kind of language of uh, fuzzy serial automata? Well, I, I didn't get your answer. What, what? Do you have uh, some uh, yeah. story about of two-dimensional fuzzy serial automata for this kind of language? Yeah, well, Professor Mashu, uh, uh, what uh, he's an, uh, uh, asking the language uh, in two D uh, two dimen two dimensional uh, hybrid fuzzy solitomaton. Have you explored? Yes. In two dimension, no. Yeah, yeah, two dimension. 
I've done only one dimension. Only one dimension. In this only case, one. okay. In in this case, um, uh, do you have a classification of these kinds of language in one dimension? Uh, the we have the classification, yeah, right? Classification. Yes, of of language. Yeah, classification of language. Have you read any classification? Come yeah. across any such. Because, uh, because you you can think about of Chom Chomsky classification for right. for a language. In this case, I think the full Cicero automata offers another possibility to explore. Uh, a, cl a classes of language. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yes, yes. Might be. That's, uh, that may be explored, I think. But I haven't done anything like that. Okay. So, interesting talk, really. Thank you. General, uh, I am with Sukanto. So, uh, your, your next question is, uh, uh, examples of ACA and some evolution to uh, explore the dynamics. Uh, so, uh, I mean, do you have explored? Yes. Which one? The next question is, uh, you know, the examples of H HFCA. So, five cylindrometer and evolutions. Uh -huh. Some evolutions. Have you explored? Uh, which what what have I explored? I I didn't get your answer. Yes. You know, uh, uh, general asking this question that you know some examples of H HFCA hybrid five cylinder metals and examples and some evolution uh, to explore the dynamics. Have you yes. studied? Uh, in the, um, the the application part, you are talking about. Yeah, right. The application part. Uh, in the application part, uh, what what you wanted to know? I didn't get the question. Could you please, uh, could you please uh, tell us the, the, your second question? Huh? Coming muffled. You know, the sound is... Yeah. Your second question. Yeah. About the I second question. Uh, could you please... Uh, Explain the second question. Yeah, I have curiosity about what happened with this dynamics of this. Uh, yeah. Because maybe following the dynamics, uh, it's possible to think about of uh, uh, how this kind of language are confined to periodic chaotic or complex dynamics. How this kind of language? What? Because this formal language um, could be um, organized in a kind of uh, dynamics, so maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so dynamics may be into yeah. Dynamics of this HFCA, in, even in one dimension, is interesting. You know, interesting. Yeah, that may be, that may also be explored. Uh, because this is, I think, this is an interesting project. If you have a kind of language in this uh, fuzzy fuzzy automata, the dynamics maybe could help to migrate uh, two-dimensional analysis. Okay. Maybe, yes. but I haven't yes. explored anything like that. Yes, yes. I haven't done anything with two dimension. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, General, for coming. <laughs> so it's very early in Mexico now. <laughs> yeah, I understand. It's <laughs> oh, very interesting. Yeah. General, we are also expecting some talk from you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I will send my title and abstract song. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
Okay, any more questions? So you have any question, Mr. Sam? No. Okay. So anyone, any more question, Kamalika or anyone? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, any question, Kamalika? No. Okay. Thank you, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Remind about the next talk. Next talk is on uh, next week, next Saturday. Uh, Professor Kenichi Morita has uh, agreed to give a talk. It will be. Uh, I will send the invitation soon within uh, within two days. And so it will be. I guess it will be a very interesting topic. I invite all of you to join on that talk. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Professor Basu. Thank you, Martin. Thank all of you for joining. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.